Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Welcome to church. Praise the Lord. Let us uh, stand up, please. Thank you very much. I'm sure we had a you know, good day. Um, it's a very good day. On a day when uh, times, we pray that you be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that everything we're going to be doing today will be according to your leading and according to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. How many of us, Jesus has been good to us? Hallelujah. Jesus, you are so good to me in all circumstances, in all circumstances. Oh, Jesus, you are so good to us in all circumstances, in all circumstances oh, Jesus you are so good to me in all circumstances oh, in all circumstances oh Dependable, dependable God. It doesn't matter what comes my way, you are still God. Intentional God. You 
are good. You are good. You are good. Jesus. You are good. Jesus, you love me so much. Get together. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. You feel my heart. We so much peace and you're amazing. You're amazing. You make my life feel brand new. You're amazing. You're amazing. You make my life.
let every other name fade away Still there's only you Let every other name fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Jesus take your place Let there be other name In Jesus' name, you're welcome this evening to this Bible study. We we'll bless God for this privilege I have to moderate this service. We trust the Holy Spirit to guide us and to teach us Himself and open up the scriptures unto us for us to understand and for us to begin to run with those understanding in the name of Jesus. And so we'll start with a word of prayer, trusting God for an open heaven this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise for this great honor and privilege we have and opportunity to share from your word, to deliberate, to look into the scripture, and for you to teach us yourself. Lord, I do not require, I do not rely on any eloquency, but I rely on you, Holy Spirit, to have your way and for us to open up the scriptures to us so that our spirit man, our soul, our body can be edified. Thank you for everything. I will pray in Jesus' name. Our theme for this month is walking. And walking all heartedly. Walking and walking all heartedly. And I'd like us to go back to our text, our theme text, which is Joshua 14, 7 to 9. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land of Canaan. 
I returned and gave an honest report. But my brothers who went with me frightened the people from entering the promised land. For my part, I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God, so that they most solemnly promised me the land of Canaan on which you were just walking will be your grant of land and that, and that of your descendants forever because you all utterly followed the Lord my God. That was Caleb talking to Joshua, trying to tell them this is the reward of walking with God and following God wholeheartedly. The topic I have titled this message or this teaching is Walk from Your Heart. Walk from Your Heart. You know, in my very first life, while trying to come into this faith, I tried, I strayed into the choir ministry or to the music ministry, and I felt that was where God was calling me. And I remember the person that was training at that time used to say, Sing from your belly, sing from your belly. I, I said, How can someone be singing from his belly? Eh? How can you be singing from your belly? I beg, I will sing from my truth. Is there a kind of thing for belly? So it became very, very difficult for me every time. You see, you are singing from your throat, string from your belly. I struggle with it until I had to drop out from that uh, ministry, knowing that the belly is for food for me. So why should I be singing from the belly? Now I put this topic walk from your heart. How can you be walking from your heart? We'll see what it entails. And the truth is that the heart. It's one of the most important organs of the human body. It is at the center of our body and at the center of our life. The earth is like the turbine that runs an hydropower station. While the turbines are sometimes stopped after many years of operation to go for lifetime maintenance, the earth never stops working throughout a human's lifetime. Not even when a person is in what? Coma. And the heart continues to what? Pump. One of the things, if the heart stops pumping, what happens? What happens? The person doesn't cross over with that. Uh, praise God. So the heart is very important. It is a very important organ that pumps every, every time. Now, we're going to read the text later, so let's just go ahead. An average human heart, and what I did was to do a little research. It's a pity that our doctors are not uh, in the house today. So I did a little research, and you know, when they check your pulse, mostly when they check your pulse, what do they normally count? Maybe they start counting from one in one minute. So who they will count 72? So who 76? Some of us, they will count 60 something and the rest of them. So, see, the average human heart beats about 100 times, get it now, 100,000 times um, in one hour. Sorry. In one hour. Hmm? Not daily, not, not daily. So, sorry, daily, including when you are sleeping, sorry, daily. I multiplied it. So if you multiply 72 times 60, times 24, what do you get? 72, that's the average, times 60 times 24. Becomes what? 100, about 103,000, thereabouts, you get. So while you are sleeping, the heart is still what? It's still beating. So it doesn't stop beating. So in one year, if you now multiply this 100,000 times 365, what do you get? 36,500,000 times in a year. So it's beating continuously. Now, so if you are 30 years old, how long has your heart been beating? Over 1 billion times it has been beating. And it's never tired of what? Doing that. The heart continues to what? To beat. No leakage, no blockage, 
he continues to beat. And if you are 50 years old or 60 years old, about 2 billion times it has been beaten. And he said in one, in that one minute that he does 72, that he plums, pumps about what? 5 liters of blood. So if you also multiply that and the rest of them, it's a lot of numbers. Praise God. Now, I also went further to do some little research. You said the average resting heart is usually between 60 to 80 beats per minute. That is, if your heart is resting, about between 60 to 80 beats, if it's resting. Now, but some athletes are resting heart rates of as low as 30 to 40 beats per minute. What it means that you're sitting down and not doing anything. If you check their pulse rate or their heartbeat, you find out that you count about between 30 and 40. I read also too that the winner of Tour de France at the time, when they checked his beat, it was 28 beats per minute. So, however, when they are doing their athletic work, the beat rate goes up as it were. Now, what are we saying in all these ones? All uh, biology. The summary is that the art is a reliable and most resourceful word, powerhouse. Every person, every word, every person, or let me say every entrepreneur, including God, daily six men and women who will work and work with him like the art does. So if I have a business today or I have a church or I have an enterprise, would I want to employ somebody who is lazy? The question, no. If they are doing an election now and they're trying to vote and uh, nominate a candidate, if we know that this candidate is a lazy candidate, doesn't do anything, are we going to nominate him? Not most, not most likely. Eh? Not most likely are going to nominate him. So everybody wants somebody who is what? Who is hardworking? God himself desires somebody whose heart is what? Working. Whose heart is in what he's doing. Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. God, the Bible says God's eyes, such as what? To and fro the heart. To strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. So God himself is not looking for who? A lazy person. He's not looking for somebody who is like a desica. God is not looking for that kind of person. That's why Bible scholars have continued to use the art to describe the spirit of a man. Because of the importance of that art. It is a word, a power. So when you see the heart. The heart is not the physical heart. It's not that physical heart. It is what? The spirit of that man. And body man is composed of, of how many parts? Three parts. Body, soul, and what? The spirit. And so, God, they describe, use the spirit to what? To describe the heart, to describe what? It's because of the importance of the heart to the body. So the spirit too in a man is what is most important. Praise the Lord. I said the spirit what? The spiritual organ that drives the course of life. Praise the Lord. So let's go to our text now. Our text is Mark 7. I was just to set Mark 7 from verse 1 to 23. Are we there? One day some Pharisees, teachers of religious law, arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. He noticed that some of his disciples failed to follow the Jewish ritual of hand washing before eating. The Jews, especially the Pharisees, do not eat until they have poured water over their cupped hands as required by their ancient traditions. Similarly, they don't eat anything from the market until they immerse their hands in water 
This is but one of many traditions they have clung to, such as their ceremonial washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. So the Pharisees and teachers of the religious law asked him, why don't your disciples follow our age-old tradition? They eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony? Jesus replied, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For your Ruth, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. For you ignore God's law and substitute your own tradition. Then he said, you skillfully step, sidestep God's law in order to hold on to your own tradition. For instance, Moses gave you this law from God. Honor your father and mother. And anyone who speaks this representative of father or mother must be put to death. But you say it is all right for people to say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you, for I have vowed to give to God what I will have given to you. In this way, you let them disregard their needy parents. And so you cancel the word of God in order to earn down your own tradition. And this is only one example among many others. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen. He said, and try to understand. It is not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. Then Jesus went into a house to get away from the crowd and disciples asked him what he meant by the parable we had just used. Don't you understand either, he asked. Can't you see that the food you put into your body cannot defile you? Food doesn't go into your heart, but only passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. By saying this, it declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. And then he added, it is what comes from inside that defiles you. From, for from within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceitful loss, deceit, lustful idea, desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. Praise the Lord. Now, what Jesus was pointing out there, what the Pharisees raised, the issue they raised, was it right? I'm going to discuss, so it's not going to be just me talking to you. So, what the Pharisee raised in that place, and we can go back so that we can see it. So your, your folks, they don't perform the ceremonial washing of hands before they eat. Was it that they don't wash their hands? I don't think so. I don't, that was a typical way of hand washing. So if you are not washing hands, that would be that would be an hygiene issue. Are you with me? And which they were very right. And I'm, told, I'm not sure Jesus would uh, uh, encourage dirtiness. But they were not careful to do it what? In the manner our tradition demands. Remember, these Pharisees, who were they? Who were they? The teachers of tradition? No. They were teachers of who? The law. The law of who? God. And to them from who? From Moses. But see where their focus was on. Not on the law they have been handed over to war to teach or to protect. It was based on what? Tradition. And they were angry that disciples were not what? Following 
the tradition. Why do you think they were angry? Why do you think they were angry? It, it might not be right, so let's, let's try and think. Why do you think they were angry? Anybody? Let's get the second mic, please. Anybody? Why do you think they were angry? We can go back to that scripture again so that we can read it very well. And if you are online, you have a, an idea, just throw it on this platform, we would read it out. What? That is a sign of what? Holiness or righteousness. And if you recall, and from what we read, Jesus Christ was gaining what? Prominence. So if these people, my assumption, I'm not, I would say this is my thought. If these folks, the disciples were doing the same thing, it will still show some relevance that, okay, okay, we are still relevant in this man's uh, ministry. He's doing what we say we are doing. Only that he's just doing it, what? He's just preaching something different. They wanted what? Affirmation. And we're not getting that affirmation. And many of us today, we want affirmation of our culture and tradition in this faith. Hmm? We want an affirmation. We want our tradition, our beliefs, to be what? Affirmed in our faith. And when it's not done that way, Many times, you see breakages, denominational breakages, or you move from one place to that, looking for what? That message, that blend of faith that supports what? Tradition. Praise God. And there are countless examples we can, we can think of. Of things that we do, like, give me, who can give me one example of things that we do traditionally, that we have brought into faith, and we want faith to affirm it, even though you know, just because I pointed that to them, they told me the ones we were doing. Yeah, to set aside laws. Okay, look, honor your word, father and mother. If you don't do it, you are guilty of have you put to death. Say no, I'm honoring you, but this one. I have pledged it for who? For God. So, or father or mother. See, now use God as a word, as an excuse. As an excuse. Praise God. And we need to be careful as Christians to what? To follow the law. If, if you go further than what we read today, Folks, there were many things they were doing. Number one, which I pointed out in this text, the Pharisees were not, they were not, they were not only religious, they showed what religiosity in everything they do. In verse, between verse 12, this washing of hands you were seen, as I said, is what a physical demonstration of what, like they were holy. And I've said that many times. We do physical work in church. You know, somebody was challenging me and said, okay, uh, you are doing your... It doesn't, it doesn't count for holiness. Though. It doesn't count for humility. That's what the person told me. It doesn't count for holiness. Because we see it. Ah, you've cleaned the whole church. you sang. You've done this song. you washed this. Sanctuary keeper. you watched everything. And we want to affirm that as what? Holiness. Or righteousness. Or being right with God. Because there is physical what? Extension of what? Strength. 
unfortunately, it's been ruled out. It's important, but it does not substitute what? Righteousness. It doesn't. It doesn't. In verse 5 and verse 8, we add air to customs. Customs in our church, we don't wear trousers. Hmm? In our church, we don't do this. We don't co- we cover our head. We do this. We don't wear earrings. And we think that should substitute for what? Holiness. Or righteousness. Or right standing with God. Sorry. It does not what? It does not. In our church, we don't use drugs. We don't go to hospitals. And so many things that have become what? They are traditions. Customs. That we have blended into faith. And we have made it what? A mark of what? Righteousness or holiness. We don't eat snails. We don't eat pork. Okra. Eh? Things that draw so that your life will not be what? Drawing. Me, I want my life to draw because I eat okra very well. <laughs> Praise God. Catfish. There's so many things. These are traditions that have been bought into feet, sprinkling of water, and so many other things. Help us flash verse 6. Jesus re- replied, You hypocrite. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. For a root, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. La kataribuya. Your tongues is very powerful. Hmm? You are very eloquent in Christian language. Bless you. It is well. I declare unto you peace. Shalom. And we count that thing as righteousness. Today I heard something trending. I said this evening uh, somebody, I don't know, I think, okay, I think somebody said we should put Jesus on a what do you call it? Nasetos. And when I when the person told me this evening and I went on people's status and I saw it most everybody. Fantastic idea. We honor him with our social media status. Our, our arts. The centerpiece of where God is interested in. In Proverbs 20, verse 27, let's open Proverbs 27. Use Amplified for me or KJV. The spirit of a man, that is the conscience of a man, is a lamp of the Lord, searching and examining all the innermost part of his being. God is searching and looking at me and you. So their heart is carrying Jesus. There will be revival in this nation today. If at that moment, at that 12 noon, every person that has put it on status, truly, their hearts are right with him. Revival will happen in this country today. And it's a good move. But I wish you can take it further. The Pharisees, they honor me with their lips. We honor him with our status. Our Facebook page, our Instagram, 
are post. So what a man takes in does not what? Defile him. It's what comes out. While we are putting on the status, have you fought? Have you lied? Have you stoned him? What is your thought towards your fellow brethren? That is a question in our hearts. And the, can, the light of God is searching. And see, I, I see 10, 10 million persons having me on the status, but I can only find 100,000, 200,000. The same number that their hearts are right with me. The revelation from our text for me today is that God's light is in every one of us looking for who? Those whose hearts are what? Are right with him. Enough of physical what? Expression. Physical expression, traditional expression of faith Enough of it. Enough of it. The centerpiece of the action is what? The heart. That is where God is interested in. You are fine. Oh, lovely sister. You are handsome. Great brother. You speak well. Fantastic. You walk straight. Lovely. You sing well. You work hard in church. You clean the church. Glory to God. Is your heart. Can I dwell in there? Am I the Lord and master of your heart? You can't walk. I mean walk. You can't walk with God. Without working on your heart. It's not possible. You need to work as, your, as an athlete. Work it out. Let the oxygen that the heart releases to the blood that passes through it. Let it pass through you. And release that life out for men to see. Because there's a lot of work to be done on this earth. There's a lot of work to be done on this earth. We have misplaced priorities. Rather than worrying about the inner person, we are concerned about other external what? Influences. Let's open to 1 Corinthians 12. So let me just see the verse. Come and look at the verse quickly. So, my wife, let me look at that. Question 12. So, Lori, can you let me look at it? When I send to you, what verse? Thank you. Okay. First Corinthians two from verse thirteen. This is what we speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truth what? In spiritual words, the man without the spirit does not accept the things that come from the spirit of God. For they are what? Foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are what? Spiritually designed. The spiritual man makes judgments. Okay, that's all. What were we saying there? Until you and me allow this 
carnal mind to be subdued. See, it is practical. And I talk modestly about my own personal experience. Until you allow your spirit man to be exalted above what? The soul. You will continue to what? Struggle. Struggle. I'm talking to believers now. We must walk with the spirit man. And how do we walk with the spirit man? By what? The study of the word. So that daily you receive instructions. You are broken. You know that what? The physical exercise you do, the traditional things you do, they don't begin to what? Correct you. No, this is not what I want you to do. I want you to what? Walk from your heart. Let it be me directing you. Not you directing the affairs. You know, pastor said something and on Sunday when he was talking about the children of, Is- children of Israel in Numbers 13 and they were asked to go and what? Spy that land. A question stirred up in my mind. Why did God want them to go and spy that land? Why? Is it is God, is not God not omnipotent? Omnipotent does he not see everything? He does see everything. Eh? He knows what is in that place. That's why he promised them. You know, and I began to read. And I got to Deuteronomy 1. Let's open to Deuteronomy 1. And I got the answer there. Because sometimes you need to know the backstory of things. Let's start from, uh, I think, verse, Deuteronomy 1, I think, verse 13. Just hold on. Okay, verse 19. Then just as the Lord our God commanded us, we left Mount Sinai and traveled through the great and terrifying wilderness as you yourselves remember. And headed towards the ill country of the Amorites. When we arrived at Kadesh Barnea, I said to you, we have now reached the ill country of the Amorites that the Lord our God has given us. Look, he has placed the land in front of you. Go and occupy it as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. But you came, you all came to me and said, first, let's send us cards to explore the land for us. They will advise us on the best route to take and which towns we should enter. Can you see where this issue of scouts came from. God permitted it. Yes, if you go to Romans, you say that God, God allowed it. Just like the same way Moses chose leaders. And God what? Sanctioned it. God allowed it. If you and me are a child of God and we want to run life by what? traditional principles, norms in society, things that we've believed, we would never achieve the plans and purposes of God for our lives. It would never. God will might permit it, it might allow us to what? And so they would, if maybe they are not spy that land, that fear would not have what? Come upon them. They went to spy the land. They love what they see. But they could not see with the eye of the spirit. There's a challenge before us as children of God for us to walk on our hearts so that we can walk with God. Our emotions are controlled, are working. 
are controlled by what we call the central nervous system. And it is from what? From the brain. But a spiritual man, the brain is not what determines where he walks to. It's what? The spirit of God. Telling you, Yemi, don't go that route. Don't say that thing. Don't do this thing. Until we take our spiritual experience to that level, we cannot be said to be what? Walking and walking what? Wholeheartedly. It's not about just desire. I want to walk from my heart. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, do you think they don't love God? They love God. But they walk according to what? Tradition. They walk according to what they have known. Our work is to strengthen the state of our spirit man so that we are able to walk from our heart rather than walk from our head. That is the work we have before us. In the service of God, and you know these are loyalty months, and we're going to a new church here starting in July. We want to do this work, the work of ushering, work of sanctuary keeping, the work of preaching, the work of music, marrying the children. We want to work it from where? From our hearts. Be led by the Spirit of God. I would say for as many as what? Are led by the Spirit of what? The sons of God. Because the work we are doing is not physical work. It's spiritual work. So why are we using what? Physical means to solve spiritual problems. Why? Why are we doing that? And so we struggle. And we make mistakes. I share with some of my friends my recent experience even running a business in the last one year. And I've had to pray more. Pray more rather than what? Walk. Do the work more. Yes, you call, that is not even spiritual work. But I know that I, am, I have a spiritual calling over my life. And I'm out there representing what? Christ Jesus. And so, despite the challenges you face, you want to see what God is telling you. Don't apply for this loan. Don't do this one. Don't do that. I know I shared with some people my own experience. And we've been doing our egg business for the last 10 years. And we've had ups and downs. And just about February this year, we're having a last batch of beds we are rearing. And it was as if that was the only one we had. And we have about two or three lines of businesses in the poultry business. We do both broilers and we do layers. And we didn't, our layers were old, so we needed to replace them. So we had the 6,000 layers that we were rearing. And we spent money... We were about so when you read layers, you read them for the first uh, sixteen weeks. They won't give you anything zero. You'll be feeding them, feeding them. So by eighteen weeks, they'll start dropping eggs for you. And so we had gotten to, I think, week fourteen. And just one day, I was praying, and I had clearly sell these layers. <sighs> sell the layers. This is our replacement for this stock sell this layer and focus on broilers. And I'm in the finance part of my business. My partner manages the operations side. And I told him, say, how, can, how can I be serious? How can you sell layers? Which one are we going to replace them? Who sells layers at week 14? We'll have been marketing them since they are week 10. So when he refused, I went back to pray. And I said, God, only you can convince him. He's your child. Only you can convince him. So, 
I woke up that morning, I did some financial analysis, sent to him, and he said, Yeah, me, this thing can't work. How do we get persons to buy these layers? I said, Why don't we tr start to try? In one week, we got somebody to buy the layer, those layers. It's not one million, it's not two million, no. it's up more than at least upper figures. And the person paid instantly. Paid in more than two days. And he paid a good price for those layers. And we had the cash in our hands. Just one week after selling, the pen that says that layers, layers collapsed. That pen that the layers are, that was a rainstorm, and that pen collapsed. And I said, look, can this be true? They called me. On 424th, we had some 600 that were left in the pen one. But the pen, the best didn't collapse. The, the, that particular part didn't collapse. But the ones that had the higher number of beds, the 5,006 collapsed completely. But we had sold them. Even the day they were packing the layers, the truck fell. And they were had to guide the layers. I was very compassionate. Ah, this person is losing some beds. We even gave them, gave them some free ones too. Okay, look, for the ones you lost. What I'm telling you is that a man, if you are a spiritual man, and it's not in all instances that you will be told, but if you desire to know and you desire to what, allow them to direct you they will instruct you. It's because I have said I want to do it that way. So, the challenge for us is to work on our hearts so that what we can what? Work with God. God wants to work with us. He wants to do great exploits. And if you are an employee somewhere, you are in business, anything, you can choose to do it the same way. And run it by what? By the Spirit of God. So that you don't struggle. So that you don't struggle. You don't beat around about the bush. This country is hard enough. The world is hard enough. Why do you want to make it harder? When you have a resource that can empower you to be like what? A superstar. And they're asking you, Show Loguni, are you using magic? And you can say, I am walking by what? Divine mandate. Divine mandate. Praise God. Any question? Contribution, question. What are those things that prevent us from doing these things? What are those things that fight, that contend against our hearts? We need to, we need to lay them before Jesus today. What are those things that prevent us? I, I, you know, I say this with all utmost humility. If you enter that realm, it's sweet. It's enjoyable. You make mistakes, so I'm not saying you make mistakes, so because you think that sometimes God is leading you, you might make mistakes. But because they know that what you are truly, you truly want to listen to them, they will allow you to recognize them. The voice. You will truly recognize them, and you begin to take decisions based on on us they direct you. And don't be afraid. If you make mistakes, it's an honest word, mistake. It's an honest mistake. So there's no fear. Ah, they say I should go and speak to Sister Janet. I went to speak to her. Sister Janet said she's married. As Dr. Kogito said, don't be discouraged. Go back and meet them. Ah, God. I thought I heard you very well. 
Sir Jane says he's married. He said, no. I want to see Sir Jane in Tobon. Sir Jane in another place. Or maybe some other name you didn't hear very well. Eh? <laughs> She's my wife. <laughs> Praise God. So, the truth is that we have a great work to do. And the work is to walk with our hearts. So that at every point in time, we are praying. And so, prayer becomes sweet and enjoyable. Because it becomes what? A conversation with God. Not an, a, a physical exercise to reduce your weight of your head by shaking your head every time. No. It's not because it, it goes beyond that. And they can call you while you are driving. They can say, okay, park. Park. Talk to me. You can say, this place, don't enter that place. Don't go to this place. And you listen. That is the challenge of Christianity today. It's not to put, status is good and we proclaim Jesus. But we want it to come from the heart. Not from the keyboard. Or from the phone. Praise God. Pastor, you have something to say? Okay, sir. Um, thank you very much, sir. Uh, the first thing I want to call our attention to is that in order to really do from the heart as you've taught us this evening, sir, it also calls to mind that we must take time to read the Bible as um, you've tried to make us know this evening. Because if we are not students of the Word of God, there are things that we will hear that will sound very, very logical, reasonable, yeah. reasonable and it, it looks like if, oh, if you are not doing it that way, you are missing out because it can be so convincing, the presentation. But um, and as we were preaching, I just went to Colossians chapter 2, and I was start from verse um, 16, Colossians chapter 2, from verse 16. And at times, the simplicity of the word makes it look like Eve is not as tough as what some people say. So reading from 16, it says, don't let anyone... No, go back to that other one, please. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbath. Go back. You see, he called it holy days. Oh. Mm. So who, should, who will not celebrate holy days? Mm. Who will not celebrate the beginning of the month? Mm. One particular time. And you see, if you don't join in that, you look like if you don't... An outcast. Yes, because everybody, that's how you possess the month. Let's go ahead. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come. And Christ himself is that reality. Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels, saying they've had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud. And they are not connected to Christ, the head of the body. For he holds the whole body together with its joints and ligaments, and it grows as God nourishes it. So you have died with Christ, and he has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. So why do you keep on following the rules of the world, such as don't handle, don't taste, don't touch? For such rules are mere human teachings about things that deteriorate as we use them. These rules may seem wise because they require strong devotion pious self-denial, and severe bodily discipline. But they provide, they provide no help in conquering a person's evil desire Fantastic. in the place of the heart. Fantastic. So, so 
Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead. Since you have been raised to a new life with Christ, set your sight on the realities of heaven, where Christ sits in the right place of honor at God's hand. It's a continuation. Mm. Fantastic. 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 You know, it can't be as direct as more than that. All these things are just pious. Okay. I'm sure people are born again, sir. Eh? So born again, don't worry, don't worry. You know, he's doing this. All those things are pious. Ah, he's just jumping around at his age. So, a lot of things, they're just pious things that do not count for what? For anything. Eh? They don't count for eternity. They are things that are fading away. There are things that are fading away. I was reading about, I've been studying about Moses since we started this thing. I would say he was, he was a very humble person. Very humble person. God said, let me destroy them. I will set up a new what? A new line with you. Say, ah, why now? Why? We, the only person that has the spiritometer. Eh? He's not here on earth. Too. He's not here on earth. It's the idea what? It's in heaven. So nobody can determine how spiritual you are, me or, or I am. But by the fruits you exhibit, by the character you display, we can have what? A glimpse of who you are. Not because you sweep the church every day. Not because you sing aloud. Praise God. Let us pray. Do you have a question? Okay. Whoa. One of us on Sunday, the Lord spoke to him about what's going to happen in the service. And some of those things happened. They speak to men. They speak to men. If your heart, you desire to open it up. God's light is searching at through his spirit, through a spirit man to see whose people their hearts are right with him. How could he have singled out Mary out of all the maidens and virgins in Israel? The Spirit of God is searching hearts. Looking for those whose hearts not that whose hearts are right completely but whose hearts are panting after him. He wants raw materials to use. He wants to make you. The work is not physical. It's not traditional. It's spiritual. 
knowing the word of God, searching to know him. That is the tax for us. Knowing Jesus, knowing the Holy Spirit, telling him sincerely from your heart, I am ready to walk with you. I'm ready to listen to you. I surrender all to you. Those are the folks is looking for. And it will take you through the process. So that your work can be from the heart and not from the head. We want men that can work from the heart. If we all work from the heart, we will all work like soldiers in sync. We will not work at cross purposes. Because God's spirit has no confusion in it. Talk to God this evening and ask him to help you. And if he has been talking with you, ask him, Lord, I want you to talk to me the more. I want you to instruct me the more. I want to do your will the more. I want to follow you the more. And peradventure you are here or you are listening to me online, you have not known Jesus. You can know Jesus tonight. By it's a simple statement, Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I surrender all to you. And with that confession, you become a child of God. And the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the assignment is done. I believe your counsel. Only you can do the work you choose to do. Lord, for as many folks that are here who are listening to us online and desire us of your work. Lord, help them to walk with you. Every impediment in their way, I ask that Lord, give them wisdom to be able to remove and avoid. Heavenly Father, we ask that God, do the miracles in their life and let the glory be yours in Jesus' name. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Pastor Amy, for the word. It was such a refreshing time. You know, um, one of the one of my takeouts today is, you know, tradition is handed over to us, but our relationship with God is is what we we get by spending time with Him. And Pastor laid emphasis on the fact that spending time in the Word of God is quite important because that's the only place you can get revelation. And God will help us. Let's package our offering. They are offering envelopes right in front of our chairs. Online worshippers, the account number is being displayed on our screen. So you can use it to pay in your offering, your tithes. So let's bow down our heads as we pray on our offering. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are the one that gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. Thank you for the offerings that you have given to us, and we are, we are bringing them back to you. Because we know that there is nothing that we have that we have not received from you. Therefore, we give it back to you, Lord. We ask that it would be an acceptable offering before you. It would not just be a ritual, Lord. This is not to buy our way to you, Lord. But indeed, it's from our hearts we are giving these offerings. We ask that you receive it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have our Sunday service. Our Sunday school starts first on Sunday. We have our prayer meeting on Friday, 6 p.m. So you can check the um, WhatsApp group for the Zoom link. And 
I pray God bless us all in Jesus' name. Please let's let's rise up to pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name because you have given us your word. And what your word does is it illuminates our paths. It shines light on every dark areas in our lives. We pray that we'll be the Berean Christians. We'll get back home and we'll search the scriptures. We'll search the scriptures for what you have to tell us more in your word. That the words that we have heard today, Lord, they will not stand against us. But indeed, they would bring meaning to our lives. We'll become better off in the name of Jesus. We thank you because your peace is being shared abroad in Nigeria, in Lagos, in every part of the world. That indeed, you are the Prince of Peace. You will calm every raging storm in, your, in our nation and the nations of the world in the name of Jesus. We go into this week blessed because we are the blessed of the Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because the remaining days of this week are blessed for us. Whatever we lay our hands on to will prosper. We know that, Lord, our going out and our coming in is preserved because the, the mark of the Lord is upon us. Therefore, no man will be able to trouble us. We exalt you because every of our members, good news is the only thing that is permitted in this arena. We pray that good news will continue to be heard of us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting King. We praise you forever in Jesus' name. Amen. The grace and fellowship. Rest on the very first now forever. Amen. Good night, everyone. Have a blessed week. Thank you.